Josh Chambers, founder of Earmark. As you know, we're from New York. Uh, we've been around for about a year and a half, built three products, latest of which has been in the App Store for three months. So Earmark helps you spend money on things that really are very important to you by skipping things that aren't. And in the process, we're helping to fix, we think, the mobile advertising industry. So before doing Earmark, we were in the advertising industry. So we did the UI for Nike Fuel Van. We built Epic Mix. And I was at the helm of the global strategy for Reebok when we almost turned the brand around. Um, so Earmark was built on this insight that your receipts tell your life story. For most of us, what we value is more accurately determined by our receipts than anything else. It tells a history of what's important to us. So if that's true, the problem is most of us are telling stories that we aren't happy with. 75% of Americans list finance as their number one stress, something that they don't, they don't like, they're not happy with. So our mission is to inspire people to spend their money unforgettably. And we think our product does just that. So I'm going to let my two-and-a-half-year-old tell you how it works. Who loves dancing? traveling, and foreign films. Like most of us, Lola's day is full of decisions, most of which she isn't even aware she's making, especially when it comes to her spending. $3.50 in the morning, $12 at lunch, $4 in the afternoon, $5, make that $10 at happy hour, and $20 at Target. I should book. I need money. But what Lola really wants these days is a beach vacation, a new outfit, and a nice pair of headphones. The problem is, indulging in luxury purchases can feel irresponsible. But it doesn't have to. It all starts with a few smart decisions and the help of Earmark. Laying off the booze, putting those cookies back on the shelf, brewing coffee at home, and eating in. Earmark helps Lola track what she doesn't buy so she can feel good about splurging on what she really wants. Lola's friends can even make recommendations and help keep her on track. And before she knows it, Lola buys the dress she never thought she could afford. <laughs> the simple pleasures of getting what you really want. Brought to you by Earmark. She's pretty cute. She's pretty stinking cute. So the cool thing is, we know exactly what you intend to do with your money. So we can uh, broker hyper-relevant ads. So here's a real Earmark user. He has $133 to spend. We know that he wants a pair of sunglasses. So this is an opportunity for Sunglass Hut to step in and give him 20% off, because he's $20 away from his goal. So this is what we're doing in the mobile advertising industry to help fix that. And the reason Sunglass Hut can do this is because we uncover the world's most reliable intent data. So three months in, we've got about $1.5 million of spending intent. This is stuff that people want to buy. So this data combined with a $7.7 .7 billion mobile advertising industry is why Panda Daily called this advertising gold. So why us? Um, there's a couple different reasons. First, we're not from the bank, so we actually think about how people use their money the way they want to use their money, not how banks want them to use their money. So with our experience on Nike Fuel Band and that work and tracking things, we took the tracking approach to an industry that's never really had a good tracker, at least for the things that we're tracking. Uh, secondly, we actually know how to disrupt advertising and do this well in the mobile space, so we know how to broker relationships with brands. That intent thing isn't a pipe dream. We actually have people who are now calling us to see if we can deliver their ads in our app just three months out. And we've only raised $200,000, and we've been around for a year and a half. So we've iterated our way towards a viable product, a product people like. It started out as a nonprofit donations platform where you'd skip a beer and give money to a nonprofit. It's evolved and evolved and evolved. Um, so we know how to extract what people want, what they think about, and then build products. Um, I've never really considered myself, I, no one in my family was an entrepreneur, so this wasn't really a goal of mine to become an entrepreneur, but I like solving problems. Um, and it occurred to me when I was going to have Lola, our first kid, someone came up to me and they said, hey, you know, you're going to have a kid, you should buy an SUV because you're going to need so much space to fit all the stuff that you're going to have to buy. There's nothing wrong with buying an SUV, but I remember thinking, that's a pretty thoughtless comment. Do I really have to buy all that stuff? Is this really that important to buy all these things so that I can buy more stuff? So I think if I you can get earmarked just for a second for people to think, is this really, is this really what I want to spend my money on? I think people will be living, living better stories, and I think culture will be better off for it. 
Thanks. All right. So you got five minutes. Judges, who wants to start it off? I, you want to kick I, it off? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get it in here first. Um, <laughs> so I love the concept, and, uh, but I, I do struggle a little bit with, um, I guess, what motivates people to go into the app experience and kind of earmark, mm -hmm. I guess, if you will, because usually there's some kind of like immediate reward. I know this is a little more long term, um, and that's, that's kind of the basis of uh, the app itself. But mm -hmm. like w day in, day out, what makes people do this? There's two big reasons. There's a philosophical alignment. So we have people who make $150,000 who live in the suburbs who are using the product. And they just like the idea of m spending their money more meaningfully, living a more minimalistic lifestyle, and tapping into a cultural trend of saying, I don't need all this stuff. So they align with it because they can see their progress. They can visualize their goals. And it gives them a nice emotional kicker for feeling like, oh, I went and bought this iPad, and I deserve to buy this iPad. Then we have people like in college, or I just talked to a mom last week from New York City who has two kids in college herself, who are financially constrained. So this 75% of adult Americans listing finances are most stressed. The median income in this country is $49,000. So for most people, buying an iPad is actually a big purchase. Um, so for them, it, it actually helps them find money in their budget. Because a big reason why people are unhappy with their spending is because they just blow it on a lot of meaningless crap. They don't even realize. I've had users say, like, I don't think I'm going to use this. And I'll just be like, just give it a try. These are friends early on in the product. And a week later, like, I, just, I don't think I spend that much money on stupid stuff. A week later, they have over $100 of things that they didn't even realize they spent their money on. So the day in, day out is a visualization and the reward of saving. And your friends can see your progress as well, which I yeah. guess could act as reinforcement to stay on track. Our second product, we thought we were going to fix couples' tension around finances. So we built a product that allowed for you to collaboratively save towards things. So you wanted, you and your spouse, you and your boyfriend, girlfriend, you would say, I want to go on a trip. You would earmark something. That other person would get a push notification and said, hey, they just made a good decision. You would see your money accrue towards the same thing. We thought, oh, great, there's a lot of tension in, in relationships around finance. Let's fix that. People came back to us and said, we just want this to be more social. I want to be able to follow my friends which was surprising because people don't talk about sex or money on, on social networks. So we didn't think that they would, and they just said, I just want to be able to follow people. So there's a competitive aspect, and there's something really fun about seeing what your friends want to buy and what they're skipping. Cool. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, I, I, I would have some concerns about how you're going to yeah, actually get your customers and then get your, get your advertisers, but I'm sure you'll, you'll figure that out. I think. One thing you should do, uh, coming from, uh, we have a tech studio and we did a business called Dollar Shave Club where we have this video, mm. and the video was very helpful. And that video of your two-year-old, you should do everything you can with it because it's very cute. Um, so 1.5 million earmarked in three months. What's the average amount earmarked per customer? The 1.5 is actually what people want to buy, so it's goals. The average earmark per customer right now is about, we have people earmarking up from 150 to right down to nothing. So we'll have some customers that'll roll in and just add a goal and never earmark anything, which for us is actually still useful because that's still data that a brand can't get anywhere else. But amongst our active users, which we define as people who earmark once or more a week, uh, they're saving on average about $50 a week. Quick question, so what is your current revenue and what do you need in order to grow at this point from an investment standpoint? Uh, our current revenue is zero. Um, we're pre-revenue still. We have a couple companies who, ad tech companies, who have called us and said, we have clients, we're trying to get in the mobile space, can we deliver ads via you? So that's been great for three months in to have people who we can start testing our model against. We're operating on a $1 to reach one user uh, financial model. Um, and right now, we're in the middle of raising our third round. So we raised 70,000 friends and family, 120 seed earlier this year, and we're looking for 450 right now. One more question. Uh, what data are you tapping into? To, how do you uh, get what their spend intent? I mean, are you tapping into the banks? Or how, uh, no, so people come into the app, the and they declare what they want. So in the Lola video, she actually adds a pair of Beats, a vacation, a trip. So they'll say what they want. They'll add a photo. They'll add a. It's very Pinteresty in that way. They can add a link, and people can look at it, and that's where we get that information from. So it's all yeah. our data. I'd be careful with that as a barrier to entry, uh, just because. I mean, I think the, the quantified self is is cool, but I think the, the most successful ones are where they're almost just kind of invisible, and they just yeah. pay attention to existing signals. So when you require, you know, there's a co cost to any kind of interaction like that. So 
something to look, up, look out for. Yeah, it's, it's, that's probably the biggest piece of hesitancy in terms of people who are reviewing the product. They're asking, will people actually earmark? So there's the goal setting aspect that people love doing. They love coming to the app and, and setting up their wish list. We limit it to five items. So it's the five things they really, really want to buy, and they really enjoy that. I would just try to pay attention to an existing, some existing behavior if you can. I don't know if you can do that on Pinterest or anything, but yeah, just because I, I, I want it. I just don't want to have to do yeah. any new behavior for it. Sure. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions? Are, are we out of time? We're out of time. I think we're out of time. Yeah.